It's not a JL-100. I won't use that. <laughs> um, the, the meeting this morning is called the Education Committee. And very frankly, um, the thrust or the direction in which Caller Lab is evolving or moving or the river is winding is directly more and more involved in this, this particular area. Uh, over the last five, six, seven years, we have developed plateaus, we have developed uh, styling charts and timing charts, and we've developed some philosophies, and, and we've worked on quarterly selection things to help stem the tide of um, uh, experimental basics or the indiscriminate use of experimental basics at, at least the mainstream level. And um, we are now beginning to feel that many of those projects are either well underway or have been completed, and that it's really time to begin turning our attention toward what most of us feel is the number one priority in all caller associations, local, state, and what we would like to think of as ours as being the international. And that is the scope of caller education. Uh, to bring you up to date just a little bit, um, Lee Helsel had been appointed as the chairman of this committee. And those of you who have known Lee for many years know that Lee has participated in too many caller seminars, caller schools, and clinics to even mention. And his personality and his outstanding leadership role in this particular area uh, he was just a natural for the job. Uh, Lee recently retired from the state of California, uh, where he worked for many years. In fact, he was in charge of the Medicare Medicaid program for the whole state. And I guess that left him with a few battle scars. And Lee has a few health problems, and that's the reason he's not here this week and with us or this por portion of the week. And he has been... Uh, forced, really, by his health condition to uh, resign from this particular committee. Uh, John Jones uh, came forth and asked me if I would pick up the ball and kind of get things rolling a little bit. I want to first read you the letter that I sent to a number of people whose names had been turned over to me both by Lee, uh, by John Kay, uh, by John Jones, and as well as a few names that I threw in there. Uh, we were looking initially for some input from people who were actively engaged and involved in the area of caller education. Um, the letter I wrote to the people was as <clears throat> follows, and I'll just kind of skim through it. Uh, Lee Helsel has resigned as chairman of the Caller Education Committee due to personal reasons. reasons. <clears throat> John Jones, <clears throat> it's too early in the morning to call. <clears throat> Uh, John Jones has requested that I serve as chairman of this very important committee, and I have accepted. You have expressed an interest in this area, and I would very much appreciate to have you serve with me on this committee. I would appreciate receiving from you at your earliest convenience your acceptance to the committee, and as detailed possible, your ideas on how Caller Lab can move directly into the area of caller education. We will need to establish a structure for the total educational program of callers, and various ways to progress into establishing and providing grassroots help to callers who are just starting out. A continuing education program for the experienced caller and perhaps the opportunity to move into the area of teaching callers who want to become caller education specialists. This is really where Caller Lab can serve score dancing best and perhaps provide the foundation for the future. <clears throat> we will have at least one committee meeting at Miami Beach <clears throat> at the Miami Beach Caller Lab Convention. This is terrible. I hope you will be in attendance and that we can create a worthwhile program that can be presented to the membership. Let me wish you and your families a Merry Christmas and so forth. So it goes back to um, a while ago. Let me tell you the names of the people that we sent this to at this particular stage. And as I indicated to you before, uh, many of these people were uh, folks who have big reputations in the caller education field. Uh, Cal Golden, Al Brundage, John Jones, Frank Lane, Jim Mayo, Vaughn Parrish, Bill Peters, Bob Van Antwerp, John Kay, Bill Davis, uh, Gloria Roth, Barry Aronovich, Harold Bosch, uh, Cal Campbell, Bruce Bird, Kip Garvey, Dick Ledger, and a young lady named Banya Layton from California. Now, several of these indicated to us that they would not be able to serve on our committee because of just too many other responsibilities with Caller Lab. 
at this time, and they were Jim Mayo, Frank Lane, John Jones, Al Brundage, and Kip Garvey. So with the nucleus of the people that we had sent the letter to, we did receive replies from everyone, which I think is an outstanding, outstanding situation in the terms of correspondence. Uh, I have a few reports that I have made up that I handed to our Board of Governors. I don't have enough to hand them out to everybody in this room, but I'm going to read it to you. And if you are really interested in picking up a copy, uh, we will be happy to let you pick up what we have and, and, and go from there. This is a report from the Education Committee. The response to my letter came back from 13 caller educators and committee members. Now that's really outstanding out of that very small list as I indicated before. So it shows we have much interest. The committee is made up, some selections made by Lee Halsell and the remainder I selected after Lee resigned. Come up with what we consider the major thrusts that this committee could or may become involved with. Number one is caller coach education. Two, continuing education for all callers. Three, education aimed at the beginning caller. Four, developing programs to assist the caller teaching classes. Now this may fall really into the area of teaching, which we have a committee for, teaching basics. But uh, enough responses came back feeling that the overall education committee can lend its help to the teaching caller, the grassroots foundation where really if our activity is going to continue to survive and grow is where uh, some emphasis must be placed. Number five, a uniform terms for square dance formations and types of choreography such as the various methods of sight calling. I think before we can progress forward into a true textbook reign uh, from this type of a committee, we need to establish some standardized terms. If you're a chemist, CO2 doesn't change. It's always what? Carbon dioxide, doctor? H2O is always uh, booze, right? So, <laughs> so and, and we have m numerous variations to the terminology we use to identify formations and positions. And uh, Bill Davis is kind of working in the direction of scrapping everything that we've had, combining his thoughts, his ideas into an expanded program. Whether it will be accepted or not, whether it's going to make it or not, we don't know. But we feel that this is one of the important areas. Uh, another area is what we mentioned in that same general vein, is that people talk about site calling, or people talk about the windmill system, or people talk about isolated site. Are we really all talking about the same thing? And until we can standardize what we're really talking about, we really can't put it down in black and white until we've identified what this system should really be called. So we need a uniform vocabulary for caller vocabulary talk, technical talk, if you will. The last one is one that I feel could or could not be included in this committee, and that's the accreditation portion of the caller coaches and specialists. As you know, the last year or two, we have begun moving in that direction. We have a, a series of men whose reputations as running caller schools have been going on for years, men and women. Excuse me, Gloria, I was about to get... I just saw the, saw the twitch in your nose. <laughs> I'm just teasing. And uh, <clears throat> so we, we, we gathered together and we, we formed a test. And we sent all of our test questions to Bill Peters. And Bill Peters combined and compiled and so forth and came up with a master test. And we've all taken those tests just to see the validity of them. Are they really uh, testing our knowledge of, uh, of co that caller educators should have? And now we're beginning to go beyond the point of the headmaster type caller uh, educator coach and into the area of the specialist, uh, the fellow who says, gee, I really don't know too much about music and rhythm, but man, do I know a lot about teaching or do I know a lot about choreography techniques? And those are the fellows that staff the caller schools along with the headmasters and work in a more specific vein. And we're increasing our scope there starting uh, over this past year. We'll be having many, many more people. We recognize that most caller education takes place not at caller schools. 
If you were to add up all the folks that attend the Brundage, Johnson, the Frank Lane, the Gloria Rios, Roth schools, and so forth and so on, uh, they would be a thimbleful to the fellows who attend uh, every Sunday afternoon sessions in so-and-so guy's basement who is running a 10-week learn-to-be-a-square-dance-caller session. That's where the heart of the, the, the learn-to-become-a-square-dance-caller really takes place. And uh, we want to be able to provide some help to these people. We want to be able to provide some help to uh, the individual local area caller associations who conduct continuing and ongoing educational programs for their membership. And we have a lot of expanded ideas as I continue the report. Most of the replies, we feel, were somewhat limited in scope. Most replies contain what I feel are the individual's pet areas of interest. Bill Peters submitted a comprehensive plan for the structure of the committee, but did not go into detail regarding basic projects. And our, our board members have received a copy of Bill's proposal, and I have some here. My concept toward the development of an active and worthwhile caller education committee starts with this convention. I wish to present all the obtained information to the committee. I wish to present all the obtained information to the committee and establish... <laughs> Sorry, Gloria. You're even. <laughs> I wish to present all the obtained information to the committee and establish a master plan for the work of the committee. And that's what we would like to delve into here today. The plan should have a detailed plan for the committee to submit to the Board of Governors Following the approval of such a plan, I feel it will be necessary to have, and this is our real key after we've got the, the framework established, and we're going to start working on that pretty soon. It will be necessary to have a caller education conference with the leading caller educators. Now, we can only do so much work in a meeting such as this, but if we can set up a framework and we can begin to fill in the notches in that framework with who are the best people to begin working on the committees on choreography, on timing, on rhythms, on the new caller education, so forth, and all the various areas. We hope to be able to pull together 10 or 15 people for a working conference in which we will begin the, the manuscript writing, the, the technical aspect of developing manuals and booklets and... Uh, putting together the information that will make uh, this committee a, a worthwhile working group. I've also requested from the Board of Governors that this type of a special working conference be subsidized, if not in full, at least to varying degrees, by Caller Lab. Caller Lab has been setting aside funds for education through accreditation programs, through the money that we have earned of in, on interest on our CD certificates from dues and things. And frankly, we have a reasonable sum of money in the bank. And I feel that this committee's overall scope is much too important to depend on guys giving up total weekends again. Uh, not that they would be paid for their work, but I'm proposing that they be paid their transportation in, their uh, housing, and their, their food while they're there. We're not going to pick on an Americana hotel. We were, we were thinking about more of a YMCA camp or a church group camp, right? Where you went through the cafeteria line and had hot dogs and beans for lunch, right? But um, if we can get far enough to, um, to get that going, we'll really be in business. The cost of such a conference would be a matter for our board to discuss. However, I feel it would be money well spent should be a caller lab project to finance the education committee and its projects. I feel that it's important that we get the ball rolling, that the committee must show some concrete evidence of its efforts in a reasonable short period of time. I'd like to read to you some of the important comments received uh, back from the, the members of the people, the committee who uh, responded. Number one, you see that man with the hat back there? Uh, Jack Pearson just walked in. Jack is... Um, 
the editor and publisher of the Florida Statewide Square Dance Magazine. We have a statewide magazine in Florida called Bow and Swing. And Jack has requested coming over and bow, bouncing in and out of meetings here at Caller Lab and taking some pictures and so forth and covering the Caller Lab convention because it's here in Florida. And we're glad to have you, Jack. The important comments received. Number one, and these are not necessarily in priority order. They're just in the order that they were selected as I went through and reviewed the... Um, uh, the the uh, reports that were received. We need to provide help to the local caller associations in their efforts to train new callers and help with continuing education for the experienced caller. One of the things that's been working successfully that we and Caller Lab can learn from, I think, is the NECA or the New England Callers Association program. Uh, let's say you are in um, Rhode Island somewhere, and your little Rhode Island Callers Association made up of, let's say, 25 callers wishes to have an educational program. And they look around and they've decided that they want to have a program on timing, okay, for their callers. So they review the list of education specialists in New England, and they select the name of Dick Ledger, who is well known for his outstanding uh, uh, experience in the field, knowledge and experience in the field. So they contact NECA, and in, through NECA they contact Dick Ledger. And if Dick Ledger is available on the date, they work things out. Now, NECA, the parent association, pays, if I'm not mistaken, 50% of Dick Ledger's fee. And the local callers association pays the other half. So it doesn't become a total burden on a smaller callers association. We have recently um, instrumented that type of a program here in Florida. It may be possible for us to do it through Caller Lab on a national basis. On a national basis. Because let's face it, some of the rural area callers associations, uh, within their scope of their own association, they cannot afford to bring in a specialist of some kind in a particular area. It's just too expensive with, with modern day economics. Let's see, number two. Our master plan must be well thought out and comprehensive. And I think that came from about everybody. Uh, so often we've seen, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Let's jump into it. And we do. And I think we here at Caller Lab, from the beginning, uh, groping along and picking out one project after another, sometimes we look back and say, gee, if we had only had an overall master plan before we jumped into individual projects, we wouldn't be running into some of the stumbling blocks that we have so far. Caller Lab should present educational programs at all major festivals. Now that's an interesting project. Uh, the National, of course, uh, last year was a huge success for Caller Lab and the National. It was a battle getting it worked out because I was in the heat of it. But once we had a meeting of the minds with the uh, National Education people, we were off and rolling, and they were very pleased with what we did. We were pleased with what they uh, accommodated us with, and we, of course, are going to be doing it again in Memphis. Um, the idea of, of some Caller Lab folks uh, presenting educational programs at major festivals, statewide festivals, so some of the individual big ones, like maybe the Washington Spring Festival or so forth and so on, is a good idea, whether we can implement such uh, will remain to be seen. But it is a worthwhile idea. It brings education again to the forefront. Develop teaching aids for beginners' classes. Now, this is teaching dancers again. And it came from many, many people. And now, there are a lot of us feel that, you know, if we don't teach our classes better than many of us are doing today, the activity might find itself in some trouble. And some of the problems with teaching the classes is not the caller's fault. It's the length of time of the classes, the amount of material that must be crammed down their throats. Also, educationally, we need to educate the dance clubs and the dance leaders to the fact that you can't go to a caller and say, graduate these people and bring them into our club in 22 easy lessons. And our club is dancing at plus two. And they make these demands on you. And we have to work educating, if you will, the dancer organizations to understand that this is not in the best interest of our activity. Um, help encourage an apprentice program at the local level was an interesting comment. Um, 
through local callers associations, the new caller might be assigned uh, X number of weeks to attend a beginner's class that the more competent teachers in the area are conducting. Now, this would become a mandatory program for him under his local association. Um, create a manual in the area of leadership and judgment. And I think that's more than meets the eye. Um, we have a lot of fine callers, technically, in the country today. Uh, people who can put you through the most interesting and complex, if you will, type of choreography and material, but who have lost sight, in many cases, of the bottom line. They're calling for themselves rather than calling for the dancers. And I think we need a lot of work, as this convention is earmarking, of the leadership and the judgment area. The man who spoke to us last night, Bjorn, I think did a marvelous job. And he hasn't really a background in square dancing, but he talked to us in generalities of leadership and judgment. I think what we need is to take some of our outstanding callers in this country today who are good examples of leadership and judgment and pick their brains and put it down in black and white and emphasize it. We need to develop textbooks for use at caller schools and training sessions. Now, that's a very big project, a very big project. Up to now, we have all been concerned a little bit at Caller Lab with conflict of interests, right? A conflict of interests. Uh, various people write books and send out pamphlets. And perhaps if Caller Lab got into the business of doing that, it would conceivably put some of these people, not maybe not out of business, but a considerable dent into business. I think the the feeling toward that line or that area is diminishing. And people are looking for leadership from Caller Lab. And it's time and it's ripe. And that um, uh, the group of people who have been writing the books and doing things are not going to be harmed severely. Uh, the books would come out as Caller Lab textbooks. They wouldn't be Caller Lab textbooks written by Gloria or by Jack or by Bill Peters or so forth. They would be information input put down in black and white, and Caller Lab gets the benefit of the name. There's some thought that maybe these books and textbooks could be provided only to Caller Lab members and to Caller Lab accredited caller schools. But I feel m much more than that. I feel if we're going to do the job, let's provide them or make them available for everybody so that we have a little uniformity to what's being done. Um, develop tests to go along with the textbooks. Very interesting. You know, we go to caller school, but how many of us truly take an exam other than behind the microphone or take a test in particular areas? A professional educational journal for caller lab members. Now, this is not a new idea. This has been bounced around for a long, long time, since almost the day one with caller lab. Uh, we've been moving in that direction somewhat with the direction, but not as a professional journal. Uh, we think it would be a, a good move. It would be a difficult one to get started, people to staff it, maintain it, to write it on a monthly or quarterly basis. So it's, it's a big project. Develop a questionnaire on teaching to be sent to all callers. And I have a copy of a, a potential uh, a questionnaire. Now, this questionnaire would be sent to every Caller Lab member who teaches a class. And he would return that questionnaire so that we can get a grassroots idea, really, of what are the true problems that the guy out in the field teaching classes is confronted with. So often he has nobody to compare them with, his problems with your problems, right? And uh, perhaps we can learn and see what we can assimilate from those um, uh, questionnaires to work towards a better dance teaching education program. Develop guides for caller education specialists to use. Could work along with the textbook ideas. Additional educational programs at our Caller Lab convention. I'd like to speak to that issue very briefly. Uh, next year, the major emphasis at our convention, at our Caller Lab convention, is going to be education. It's going to be education. As we mentioned earlier, Caller Lab's projects coming to the convention, we've been working on lists and basics and timing charts and styling things and so forth. We feel now that we're 
directing our, our efforts into making our convention more of an informative educational program. Get some of the top people in various fields to present a paper, to present a demonstration, to really get down to educational programs for the attending callers. A handbook for proper MC activities. And that's important. I'm looking at one of the gals who uh, happened to mention that. Gloria's head nodded. Provide audiovisual teaching aids for caller instruction. Now, that's another big project. You know, with the advent of what, the Betamax type of things and the, the mini recorder things, we can conceivably tape record, uh, videotape record, uh, outstanding teaching callers who are teaching lessons, outstanding educators who are teaching callers in various phases, various phases rhythm, phrasing, timing, choreography. And we can make up numerous videotapes that could be sent out into the field to the rural area caller associations who don't have the uh, uh, access to a, 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 a local educator or an outstanding educator in their area, and they could show the film. And when they see a uh, Jim Mayo or an Al Brundage or a Bill Peters or a Gloria or somebody who's got a, some stature in the educational field presenting such a program, it really should do some good. Now, in the time available at this convention, it is impossible to make a dent into the possible projects that this committee must consider. I again urge you to consider the Caller Education Conference as the means to bring together the brains and have a true working weekend, uh, getting started with the projects at hand. Now, what I'd like to start to do, and I wish John had remembered to bring that thing in for me. He's got so many things on his mind. A great big chart, so we can start mapping out some things. What I would like to do is I'd like to first read you portions of Bill Peters' recommendations which are well thought out and with this large pad begin mapping out and filling in so you're going to start thinking about all of the phases all of the phases that this committee can encompass and what we'll try to do is to put those thoughts down in appropriate categories. Do they fit into continuing education for callers? Do they fit into education for new callers? Do they fit into the education of the beginning caller? And so forth. And uh, if we can block things out, and if we get to, let's say, choreography, we put sight calling. We might list various types, but we won't go into the detail of how you do it. We'll just put it down. And then the the, the working conference takes this master plan, so to speak, and we pick out various projects that uh, would be considered priorities or firsts and dig into those in such a conference and come up with something that we can take back and, and spread out among the, the square dance world. Now, that's my viewpoint of where we can go. And while we're waiting for the pad to come in, I'd like to ask you from what you've heard from the reports uh, that I have made so far to you, do you envision this committee uh, working in the same vein, or do you see it in a different light? And I'd like to hear some comments from you. Don't all talk at once. Yeah. Gloria, stand up so we can all hear. No, I would like you to ask them a question. Um, okay. Okay, you've heard Gloria's question. How many of you feel that when you came into this room, not really sure what was happening when it said education committee, is what we have kind of outlined or played up to you, is this kind of what you thought should be taking place in here? Hands up. How many of you did not feel that, do not feel that way? And I'd like to hear, very honestly, yes, sir. Education of the non-dancer. Now, wait a minute. You mean the, the, the teaching aspect of people 
in our Learn to Square Dance programs or the education of the, to the general public of what square dancing is all about. Good point. It's a good point. Wait a minute, I want to write something down here. Because that's, that's an interesting viewpoint that was not brought up by anybody. Is that public relations? Information? Yeah, but he did say one thing. The education of some of the educators in our, I assume, school systems to present square dancing in a little different light than many do. Uh, I think it's not as bad as it was a few years ago because a lot of us are ex-physical education teachers who did, who did some or some of the local callers are now into the school systems with, with some teaching of score dancing to the children. But there is still, unfortunately, a lot of, and I'm not knocking Ed Durlacher, but there's still a lot of Ed Durlacher records being used uh, as the, the score dance emphasis. Yes, dear. That's an interesting program that you're developing there, but I think it's more tending to be a local area situation, and it doesn't really... Uh, how, could, how could a committee like this, then, provide help to your educational program? That's, this is where we're really at.
I, I think maybe that we should move along a little bit and uh, get more direct into what... Yeah. I would be interested in, in a follow-up on seeing how uh, this develops and to what success you have in truly bringing people into square dancing. Uh, I envision it being a, a, a one-night stand party dance uh, on a regular basis because you're going to have turnover galore from one week to the next in this type of an open dance situation. But a well-planned, a well-directed one-night stand square dance party always excites some interest in some people at that party that says, hey, I'd like to know a little bit more about what's happening. So you, this is the Chicago area you're speaking of? I'm sure the Chicago area should receive a, a great um, impetus in, in the number of people who wish to learn how to square dance. Yes, sir. Is there drinking there? Well, I think we can move on. Diane? What I'm gathering from your comment is that we should include a phase uh, towards the education of the caller's wife in this overall scope. Caller's partner. Pardonnez-moi. Mm -hmm. Now we can compile many, many good bits of information because I really think that everything that we have talked about here today and every aspect of this educational committee has already been written in somebody's textbook, in somebody's syllabus, in somebody's handbook for callers over the last 25 years. And this can turn out to be a big research project to compile the best thoughts, the best comments, the best viewpoints into what Caller Lab then would begin to put its stamp of approval on. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do, that paper hasn't come, so I'm going to start and use my yellow pad. And what I'm going to ask you to do is, maybe I could get a secretary. Gloria, would you come up and help? You know how to write, Gloria? If you don't, we'll, get, well, we'll ask for another volunteer. You know. Weren't you ever a school teacher, Gloria? 
Okay. Now, let us look at the various thrusts that we talked about in the initial portion of our report. Okay? And let's put some of them that you feel are the most important into three or four or five blocks of headings and then develop down from there underneath those headings and list as many important aspects under that heading that you can think of. Okay? Now, let's start with caller education and use it as a broad term, caller education. Not dancer education, but caller education. Yeah, but we're talking about the already calling caller, the supposedly seven or 8,000 uh, callers in the United States, okay? Now, let's, let's develop the next phase, other than caller education. What would be another one? The dancer education? Would that be an important phase that this committee should work on? Hmm? Well, the dancer education would be defined as assisting the caller who teaches the Learn to Square Dance programs to help him become a more effective teacher. No, we're talking about the people who are learning to square dance in class from lesson one to lesson whenever you graduate them, if you do. Programs to assist the teaching caller. Yes. Caller leadership education association Okay. Leadership for the association officers. Caller association. And dancer association officers. <laughs> that's that's tough. But it's it's true. Yes, sir. Stand up, please. It may be, and it may be that what information we gather and put together will be combined with theirs, but it. It, 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 was, it was brought up with every answer we got back. Every caller educator who returned their questionnaire to me implied that we need to help the teaching caller. Yes, I think so. Okay. We don't mind overlapping a little bit. We can combine heads and combine committee uh, reports and, and, and combine before we put something out in black and white, you know. Bob? Fine. I don't find I don't find that a problem. Yeah. Later on, what we're trying to do is to to build the tree, right? I think that might be a, a, a portion under dancer education rather than being a total scope. Uh, that's, that's the way it, it feeds into my mind at this point anyway. That, that might, but I would put that down under it as one of the categories that would be filling in underneath. How about this one that we mentioned earlier, number five, the development of uniform terms for square dance methods, types of choreography, and so forth and so on. Yeah. Nomenclature, uniform nomenclature. 
part of it. That's just the, that's the tip of the iceberg, really. Well, it may be a little bit more than the tip, but it's, it's, it's right. Now, any other major blocks that you feel? Yes, dear. That might come under continuing education, which is based to, to that one and filling in slots underneath. What are we talking about with caller education? We're talking about the new caller, the continuing education of the existing caller, uh, the callers, uh, the local caller association assistance programs, and we'll go down from there. I'm looking for major broad topics at the top to build down from. Yes. Yeah, I have that on that other page, but we may need to tear that. It's all right. Just, yeah, yeah. Education for teachers in schools, yeah. You know, um, many years ago I was in recreation work. Before I became a teacher and I was beginning, I was already calling at that point. And uh, Ed Durlacher, may he rest in peace, who provided square dance workshops for recreational and school teacher people would travel the country and put on a two or three day seminar. And it was mostly teaching us a little bit about the dances and he would play the records that he was selling to our recreation department and so forth. But it's interesting when I go back, I listen, I think of a man's name, Jimmy Clausen. Anybody know that name? And Jimmy Clausen was the one of the first traveling callers in the United States. He goes back to the 20s. And he developed the traveling score dance caller program in the United States. You know how he did it? He rode into town, sometimes on a horse, but usually on a Model A, right? Because he goes back to the 30s. And he would go up to the local school principal and say, I am a professional score dance caller. And I would like to conduct a learn to score dance program for your teachers and your students, but first your teachers. And I would conduct an all-day seminar for your teachers about square dancing and about calling. And then on the night, we would have a big dance where the students and the teachers could all come together, and you can see what it's all about. He says, no, I'm taking a room at such and such a motel, and you call me back in a day or two. And he would sit two or three days, and he would get a phone call. Some would say yes, and he would have a program for the next two or three days. Some said no, he'd pack his bag and head for another town and do the same thing. Well, the second year, they said, well, can we have you back next year? And pretty soon, he developed a circuit all over the whole United States doing this. He truly pioneered the program. We have a golden opportunity because every large school district in the United States has some, I think, competent callers and with some help from us with a training program might get the foot in the door in their local school district to do something like Jimmy did 30 some odd 40 years ago. Isn't that, have you got that? Yeah. 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 That might be good. Gloria is suggesting that we add to that a graded education program, meaning programs for elementary school students, high school students, junior high, and, uh, in fact, it might not be a bad idea to do it on the college level. Because uh, I remember when I went to school, I, I taught the square dance class in college. The teacher didn't know anything about modern square dancing. Diane? Major headings. Is what? Yeah. I think everybody knows that. Yeah, I understand that that House Bill 69 has been tied on with so many other things that they tack on to one bill or another that they're, they're just throwing a whole bunch of things together. And it, who knows if it's ever going to take place, you know? 
but it, it would give us definitely the kind of publicity if we utilized it properly could certainly help us yeah it's right now any more major efforts major thrusts can we yes sir They want to be waiting for a list? Yes, but... Right. Mm -hmm. Part of the caller education, yeah. The one area, let's see, that we had as a thrust, and I want to throw it back out to you, it's one that you're not as concerned with, maybe at this particular point, but that was the accreditation and education of caller coaches and specialists. Now this would be to help the guy who wants to teach the caller class at home. Because as we indicated to you before, by far, the vast number of people learning how to skull square dances are getting their education in the hometown every Sunday afternoon for 10 weeks or 20 weeks for a couple of hours type of sessions rather than attending the highfalutin caller school. I really believe that. Yes? No, I was, con I was really aiming it towards the caller education program. I think it fits there into providing uh, uh, possible leadership to caller associations on a subsidized basis by Caller Lab. Um, Gloria is voicing an opinion that you have made that said you feel certain that some of the caller educators are not specialists in every one of the areas of caller education. Well, I think you're entirely a belief, but she was implying that there are some callers in the field today as caller educators who you'd have a hard time battening down the hatches and finding something they don't know about in square dance calling. And the test, and the test that we, we made up that we talked about earlier really encompassed that entire scope. And there were some of the educators who did not pass that test, sincerely, because of what you're saying, but many did. Ninety percent. Ninety-one, was it, Bruce? Ninety-one. I... No, but we're not looking for mediocrity in our association. We are looking for true, outstanding people to get the ball rolling. 
the people who really have what it takes. And then we're building down from there with those uh, people of great knowledge to expand and help train more people, perhaps maybe in, in, in narrower areas, a more of the specialist type of a thing than the headmaster thing. But we feel the headmaster should have the Ph.D., so to speak, versus the, the guy who graduates from college with a basic diploma and then goes out and starts to learn what he was supposed to have learned in college. Al? I'm going to ask Gloria to finish up, and then we're going to move on to the project at hand, really, because I think we're a little bit sidetracked in, in, in this caller. There was a meeting. Oh, there is a meeting. Or you had it already yesterday afternoon, wasn't it, uh, regarding uh, some of the fellows who had questions similar to yours and were questioning what really is happening with the caller education programs, and maybe you should have attended that particular session. Yes, could I just address this for a minute and closing it out a little bit? Uh, I think there is an excuse me, you can't think. Uh, I think there, looking back, Jack touched on the fact that at this point, if there had been a master plan in many areas that we're working in with Paul Lab, if there had been a master plan, a lot of little bugs that are coming up now wouldn't have occurred. And in looking back, originally when we sat in on the accreditation committee and this thing got started, there were many of us that were very strong that we wanted to set up a specialist program first that then one by one if a person wanted to apply for each of the areas of expertise that we're trying to test here and eventually and are in the works now uh, for instance on timing things like this uh, then the person who wanted to go all the way would have to pass each one of these steps along the way looking back now and discussing it with the committee yesterday after the closed meeting we all agree that that's the way it should have been done and if that had happened, you wouldn't feel as you do, and a lot of other things wouldn't have happened that have happened. And, you know, all the committee can say, and I'm part of that, is that we are sorry that it went that way, that here we are, and we have to go along from there. Okay, any other major thrusts? My pen, I want it back. Okay, now, one of the things that we will do is we will establish the fact that we have one general chairman of the educational committee. At this point in time, it's myself. Whether I remain as that chairman, I'm really not sure because of, of health problems. Now, we will, we will need to select a general chairman, if you will, or a chairman for each one of these important overall uh, major thrusts. Now, we're not going to try to do that today, but we're going to come up with several names that we think for each one and we will get back with the committees and let people know who we've selected and if you're violently opposed to anybody you know you'll be able to voice your opinion I'd like to pick on one at this point the caller education aspect and start a whole page heading and let's just brainstorm caller education and list everything that comes to our mind that we feel will fit under this phase or this large heading title Okay? Good. See you later, Al. Who's the girlfriend? Oh, that's B. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my wife said, Who's this girl, Georgia, last night? My wife's name is Carolyn. So. <laughs> Bjorn. We had him over to our square dance hall so that he could see a square dance and round dance program in real because you know these kind of guys they, they're so busy with their own thing that what am I who am I really talking to what's a square dance really like and they've got I'm sure a barn dance in their mind someplace right so we had him over he spent about an hour and a half 
talking to people, watching me, watching the dancers, the whole scene. And uh, he apparently is not married, and he had a sister with him. And his sister said, gee, if I could get this guy to stay home long enough, maybe he'd take me square dance. Okay, now, caller education. Can we start a new thing here and just type, you know, and then we're going to brainstorm, okay? Now, we can think about all the technical aspects that fit into caller education, but I would first like to break it down into who are we directing caller education to? New caller, experienced caller, rural area caller, a caller, anything that you feel fits as a subheading under there. Greg? What's on your mind first? We call him the newer caller and let him decide whether he fits into that category himself when it comes time to uh, utilizing the knowledge that this committee would be making available. I know I've often learned a lot of things when I go back and read some of the manuals for the beginning callers, you know. Bruce? Can we, can we, can, can, do you feel that the term beginning caller is enough at this stage to group then and then maybe go down to what you could consider the beginning caller, or the guy with no experience, the guy with up to two years and then working in an apprentice program or something like that? I agree with that, but we're talking about generalities over the overall country, you know. Some place we want to provide something for the guy who's starting out as a square dance caller. Agreed? A zero. Beginning caller. Okay, usually a guy who comes to caller school or something like that, most of the guys have either learned a singing call or two. They may not have called any patter, but they've already mastered a singing call or two or tried you know, to have some feeling whether they really want to get involved. Um, I still think we call them beginner callers. Anybody disagree with that? Something for the beginning caller. Yes, sir. I think that really comes under the beginning caller, though. One of the aspects that the beginner caller may need to go through in our program that we develop, if we agree that he should, is a form of apprentice program. But I still think we're looking at uh, the trees, and I'm looking for a little little more of a forest at this point. All right? True. But where would an apprentice program fit? Would it fit under the program for newer callers, or would it be fit continuing education for the experienced caller, in your mind? The, normal, uh, the, the newer caller. The All right, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if we put a category of beginner caller, or newer caller, or caller education for the beginning caller, that's what I'm looking for, a phrase there. And under that, as one of the projects that committee should develop is an apprentice program. Now, that's, that's the picture I see. Okay. Thank 
Okay, now we're looking at caller education. Now, who we want to educate? One, beginner callers. Are we agreed? Okay, so we need under caller education. We need a, a, a subheading of education for the newer caller. We're agreed there. Okay. What well, What do you think is the best? Beginner. Beginner caller. Okay. Fine. Number two. What? Other aspects of education for callers could we put under this overall big title of caller education? That's detail. I think that becomes into the detail. Yes. Now, uh, under all of that, it will be development of textbooks for apprentice programs for guidelines and so forth for which we will go so we're still we're, we, we've got the the roots and the foundation as caller education now we're looking at the trunk of the tree and it's got several branches going out in different directions uh, the beginner caller education continuing education for the experienced caller Right. Okay, good point. Under continuing education, newer caller and experienced caller. Does that does that accept does that meet with your Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, yeah, well, we haven't got to that. We're still at headings yet. Ernie? He feels there are three stages. The, what can we call this? The intermediate caller? Uh, you called him what? Just this, the practicing caller? Huh? Wall to wall. Go. Intermediate caller? The form of an apprentice, really, yeah. I think of a journeyman as somebody who has accomplished something and is, is there. A journeyman electrician is the guy who's, who's at the top of his field, except he's a contractor. Uh, uh, yeah, he would be the accredited caller, uh, the, the one who would be involved in, like we would say, continuing education for the experienced caller. Maybe utilize uh, education for the accredited caller as being the third step and we're still looking for that intermediate step that that yes sir Yeah, the usual callers associations are made up from A to Z in terms of experience levels. And when a guy puts on a program there, 
wherever you fit, you get out of it as much as you can at your stage of development. But what we're looking for here, really, is we have recognized that there are three stages of growing into calling. The, the, the beginner caller, the caller who's had a few years' experience but still has a little ways to go, and the guy who has somewhat mastered the techniques and has become a successful caller in his area, if not further, all right? The guy who's calling for the clubs, the guy who's appealing to the dancers in his area. But there is this intermediate step. We're looking for a name just so we can categorize him. A cadet caller? Okay. Gentleman in the back. Oh, okay, with the yellow shirt, I will take you first. I think in terms of education, where we'd be getting much too broad, what we're looking for is the, the general categories of experience so that we can focus our educational programs towards their experience levels. And that's what we're really looking for. That's, that's the, the key here. Uh, Dick? How many of you uh, kind of feel that way? I'd like to bat that one around a little bit. Yes. Uh, a little louder, please. Back up a little bit. You said he was a journeyman when he came in. You meant apprentice then. Okay. It may be true in plumbing, but it's not true in square dance calling. Because in square dance calling, the caller who has lots of experience, 15 years and has grown through that time, certainly has many more skills to offer the dancers than does the, the beginning caller. Intern. An intern is the beginner. He hasn't graduated from college yet and he, in, in the educational field, and he's putting in his practice teaching. A lot of places call it practice teaching also.
Hmm. Okay, let, let's, 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 let's just drop and go on to some other phases and say that we have three phases of caller education. And we'll fill in some names as we maybe brainstorm at a different time and a different place and come up with that middle term. Okay? Yes. Okay, we have that on our list here. This is one of the categories. We haven't reached the developing stage on it. We're talking about general caller education. From the new caller, we recognize now that there are really three stages of caller education uh, directed at the practicing caller, if you will, the new caller, the beginning caller. We have this intermediate stage, which we don't seem to be able to, to, be able to pinpoint a name for, and we have the experienced caller, who is involved in what we were calling the continuing education of the callers. So we have those three down, okay? Now, before we fill in uh, directly under each one of those detailed things that what fits best under the beginning caller and the intermediate caller for now, that term in the... Let, let's go to our next major category, which was the dancer education. Okay, and let's see now, what principal headings could we place under uh, dancer education? Are there any, or is that a broad scope? Okay, uh, assisting the teaching caller at the various caller lab plateaus. How does that sound? Assistance to the teaching caller who teaches classes, who teaches mainstream, who teaches plus one. That's pretty broad. We're trying to get more specific here now into an area of caller education directly at the teaching of the dancer, not the teaching of the caller. We're talking about the teaching of the dancer here. Now, granted, we have to educate him as a caller before he can teach the dancer, but we want to assist the guy in the field to do a better job of conducting the Learn to Dance program. Bruce? Bruce has brought up a good point, that under the dancing education, what we're really talking about is to do a, a more effective job of teaching the skills of dancing. Okay, and I think that's... Now, is there any other aspect to dancer education? Can it come as part of the uh, school program? Is that a, or is that a category of its own? And we put that as a category of its own, didn't we? Okay. Um, anything else under the dancer education? Attitudes? Pardon? Well, leadership is a whole category, yeah. I think that's basically what Bruce is saying, the teaching of the skills, overall skills. So we can list many of those that are involved in, in learning to square dance. But what other facets of dancer education? Um, ethics. Teaching skills. Basically, that's what we're after, I think. I think that really hits it pretty good. We... Um, we want to help the caller who's teaching the dancer to improve upon 
his teaching abilities, and that involves uh, handbooks and pamphlets to help him do a better job. I think we, we've got that one. I understand it's 1020, right? And we're supposed to break for coffee, so why don't we take, what, 10 minutes? Or is this the end of our session? Oh, jeez. How many of you are going to another session and, and right from here or would like to continue with this? Okay, I don't mind. I've got the, the next... The room is free, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trainee. Somebody who's working.